Welcome to the Lose Your Cravings podcast, taking a different approach to your struggle with food, weight, and body obsession with your host, Kisa Amaro, Certified Integrative Health Coach. Welcome back, my friends. I'm Kisa Amaro, Certified, sorry, Certified Health Coach, and I help ambitious women transform their negative body image and obsession with weight into body confidence so that they can show up fully in their life and career. And hey, I invite you to join my Lose Your Cravings community, where we dive deeper into emotional eating, overeating, and how to reduce and even eliminate them. So head on over to Facebook and search Lose Your Cravings and join my group. It's that simple. Um, I'll see you there. (laughs) Okay, today we are talking about food obsession, right? You know the kind. You wake up thinking about how much food that you should or should not eat. When will be my first meal? When will be my second meal? When can I eat again? Um, What you can eat, what you can't eat, you know, how many calories are in that cookie? How far will you have to run if you eat that cookie? You feel like you are constantly, and I mean constantly thinking about food, the quantity, the quality, Is it good? Is it bad? How many calories? How many macros? How much fat? How much carbs? How much you'll have to work out if you eat it? You just can't get food out of your head, right? So why do you constantly think about food? Well, you, like myself and many of my clients, grew up in diet culture. We were taught to believe that we should weigh a certain amount and be a certain size. And if we are not, that it is our fault and we should lose weight so that we are or fit into that ideal body. Not only does this show up in our culture, but it shows up at the doctor's office as well. You know, if we don't fit into that height and weight chart for our height and weight, then we are classified as overweight or obese and therefore need to lose weight. Right now I have a personal story with the height and weight chart that I like to use, um, to really help debunk it. Right. <laughs> Cause I, I just, I have to laugh at it. When I was in the heyday of my CrossFit days, I weighed around 132, 135 and being 5'2, I was literally borderline overweight. Um, now had you looked at me, you would not think that I was overweight. (laughs) I was 135 because, you know, I was not all muscle, but a lot of me was muscle, right? I wasn't like one of those super lean, all muscle people, but it's like my muscles grew when I did CrossFit. So I gained weight. So had a doctor commented on me being borderline overweight or like at the low end of overweight, I would have laughed at him or her, like literally laughed in their face. (laughs) You know, these charts are not accurate and they are not the end all be all, but we think that they are because they're coming from our doctors, the people that we trust with our health. So if you grew up in diet culture, You most likely think that there is some part of your body that is wrong, it's ugly, or you just don't like it and want to change it. You know, I wanted to change my legs. You know, they were short and stubby and I wanted long, lean legs. So I tried for years to lose weight through calorie counting and restricting foods that I thought were bad and made me fat. And in doing this, I started to obsess about what I was eating how much I was eating and when I was eating it. When you want to change your body and you go on a restrictive diet, it causes you to be hyper aware of what you're eating, right? How many calories when you are eating, what you get to eat and what you don't get to eat, right? There's always the thought about all the things you want, but you can't have. And this can start out very innocently, right? You just want to lose five, 10 pounds or, you know, slim down your stomach. So you start a diet through this process. You start to obsess about what you put into your mouth and really what you can't put or shouldn't put in your mouth. Not only do we obsess about what we eat, but we obsess about the things we can't eat. We go on a diet that restricts sugar 
And guess what? That includes ice cream, your favorite dessert, maybe not yours, but mine for sure. So many times I restricted ice cream so many times. So you obsess about not being able to eat the ice cream and wanting to eat ice cream. And you can't wait until you've lost the weight and then you'll get to eat ice cream again. Or will you, right? Your beliefs about your body and food have shaped your thought patterns about food. So if I am obsessing about food, how do I stop? But first, before we answer that question, let's ask, why should I stop? Like, why should I stop obsessing about food? Right? Because life is so much easier when you don't obsess about food. <laughs> okay. Take it from personal experience. Plus there is so much better stuff to think about and better ways that you can use your brain power to better your life and the world than thinking about food. I look back at college days and think of how much better I would have done had I spent more time thinking about classes and my studies and less time thinking about food, weight loss, and working out, right? I spent way too much time obsessing about how much I was eating, what I was eating, and how many calories I was burning so that I could lose weight. Did this help me lose weight? No, this obsession did not help me. In fact, when working with clients, it's the obsession with food that keeps them in that diet binge cycle. They obsess about food. And when they veer from their plan, they go on an all out binge. They believe they've done something bad um, or they say, heck with it. I already screwed up. May as well just go for it. So my arguments for stopping your obsession about food is that one, there are so many better things that you can use your brain power and give your attention to than food. And two, obsessing with food keeps you in that diet binge cycle. Now, if you realize that you obsessively think about food and realize that you don't want to, how do you stop? First, I want you to ask yourself, why do I think about food? Figure out why you are constantly thinking about food. Are you avoiding something and using food to help you buffer from it or avoid it? Are you wanting to lose weight and you think that you need to count every single calorie or every macro in order to lose weight? Find out why you are obsessing about food. Just ask yourself and see what comes up for you. Now that you know why you're obsessing about food, I want you to ask, does this serve you? Does it serve you to count every calorie? Does it serve you to obsess about food that you shouldn't be eating? Does obsessing about food just make you want it more? And be real with yourself, like be real with yourself, right? This is how you change. Not by covering up, not by trying to look good, but being real with yourself. And this is where you can change. Now that you know why you obsess about food, I have a foolproof strategy to help you stop obsessing about food. And that is to plan ahead. I know it seems so simple and yes, it is. <laughs> but what do I mean by planning ahead? And this can look many different ways but I will share with you how I planned ahead when I was working on my food obsession. It has morphed and shifted since because I don't necessarily struggle with heavy food obsession, but I still plan ahead just in a different way. But this is what I did when I was struggling with food obsession. Um, so first write down everything you will eat in the next 24 hours the day before. So you could do it Monday morning for Tuesday morning for like Tuesday, that whole day, you could even do it Monday night for all day Tuesday. Right. But just make sure you do it the day before. So you're going to plan every single thing you eat the day before. And I mean, everything. Okay. 
What are you going to eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, drinks, all of it, right? When you plan ahead, a few things are happening. One, you plan with your prefrontal cortex, which is the part of your brain that is responsible for making decisions that serve you. When you plan ahead, you make healthy decisions that will serve you, right? I always say you never plan a full-on binge, right? I never planned on eating that whole pint of ice cream. No, right? I didn't plan on eating that whole bag of chips. It just happened, right? So when you plan ahead, you make healthy decisions that will serve you. And second, when you plan ahead, you don't have to think about what you're going to eat when you get up because you already know it's already planned. When I planned my food, I made sure I had all the ingredients for meals and the snacks, right? So when I planned it, I'm like, okay, I have ingredients for this. Yes, 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 yes. I have all the ingredients. So when I woke up the next day, I didn't have to think about what am I going to eat? How much am I going to eat? Uh, when am I going to eat all, all the questions and all the things that come up? Am I going to have that ice cream in the freezer? No, because I plan that I'm not going to, or yes, I plan that I'm going to have that after dinner. So I can stop thinking about it. Cause I'm going to have after dinner this way. I could really wake up and not have to worry about what I was going to eat that day because I had already written it down and I could refer to that when it came time to make food. Now, planning ahead is wonderful, and I think it is one of the most powerful tools you can use to help you with food obsession um, and helping you develop a healthy relationship with food and reducing your cravings. But here's the thing. When you wake up in the morning and you don't think about food, what are you going to think about? If you obsess about food because you are avoiding something else in your life, you will most likely be faced with the thing that you have been avoiding. So maybe it's a situation at work, uh, maybe a relationship, something's going wrong in your business or stress. But if you stop thinking about food, you will be faced with that situation that you were trying to avoid. So you need to be prepared to address that issue. You will need to allow your emotions. Now, if you are obsessing about food because you're trying to lose weight, you will need to still come up with other things to think about. When I was working on not obsessing about food, I created a list of things to think about besides food. And they included, you know, things like my daughter, my husband, house projects, my business, um, any hobbies I had. So when food would pop up in my head, because it will, because you've been doing this for so long. I would simply say, you don't need to worry about that. You have it all planned out. You can think about something else. What else would you like to think about? And then I would redirect my brain, right? It's like redirecting a little toddler. <laughs> so make a list of things that you would like to think about or use your brain energy on when you start to think about food have that list available so that when you do think about food, you can redirect your brain. Okay, my friends, this is all I have for you today on food obsession. Uh, go out, discover why you're obsessing about food and if it serves you or not. Then plan your food ahead of time and make your list of other topics to use your brain on. It's that simple. And if you like what you heard on this podcast, I invite you to head on over to iTunes and leave an honest review. This helps us show up higher in the search results and therefore we can reach and help more people. I greatly appreciate it. And join me for my next episode where we will talk about exercise confusion. You know, when you just don't know what to do to lose weight, <laughs> I want to guide you in the right direction so that you get results from your workouts and enjoy them at the same time. Okay. I'll see you later, my friends. Bye.